This is about as close as anyone's gotten to be able to say, here, have a copy of my VFX infrastructure. So, you know, unlike the days of old where we'd have to plug in heaps of hardware, we now get to be able to describe how all our hardware works uh, in code and use it on demand. So this is a work in progress. Uh, it's currently only tested out of Sydney, uh, but I'm going to do a demo today on where all of this works at. So if you look at the Firehawk code, line, code pipeline repository, we can just clone that. And we're going to set up in AWS Cloud Shell, we're going to set up our basic infrastructure to automate all of our images before we deploy it. So the first step is we run in it AWS Shell. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us a virtual private cloud, a, a network with um, a public subnet for uh, instances to be publicly accessible and a private subnet where we're going to run our code build from. And code build is going to look at another Git repository where we have our code that describes all of the images that we're going to deploy. So once this is set up, as soon as we make a code change, AWS is automatically going to go and build many images that we're going to deploy over our infrastructure. All right, so we've got our basic infrastructure up now, and that means that if we were to make any commits to our image repository, which is a sub-module, if we were to just go and make a code change now, I'm not really changing anything, I'm just updating a piece of documentation, but let's say that that was actual code that's going to go and update our images, we would then commit that code and push it and since Terraform and Terragrant have already gone and set up a AWS code build for us it's observing that git repository and it's going to go and start building our images so you see here We've got our images being built. And so that's gonna take about anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour. So we'll just leave that, let it do its thing, and we'll come back. All right, we're back. We've got our images, they've all been built. And these will have just all arrived. If we look at sort by the creation date, these are all the images we built today. So how many did we get? 13 images, four of those are base images. So there's about nine different system configurations we've covered there, all with one code commit. Now that those images are available, we should be able to go and deploy. I should also mention, I did skip a step where I set up some configuration, which I've done in previous videos. Uh, I'm not gonna go through that again today. We're gonna spin up our environment again for our cloud shell. Sometimes that takes a while. So our, our next step is, now that we've got our images, we're going to create an EC2 instance uh, that uses one of those images. And that first e instance is gonna be a seed instance. That seed instance is essentially our deployer. So we will automate our deployment through that instance using AWS Code Deploy. Cool, so we, should now be able to go and run our pre-deploy stage. And what that's doing is it's setting up another VPC uh, for, that, for that seed instance to run into, uh, to run from. That instance is gonna go and pick up one of those images we've just built. And once that instance is running, we've also got our code deploy uh, configured and waiting for a deployment to be run. Okay, so we've got an instance starting up now. Here it is. Once that instance is up, we're gonna be able to execute another command to deploy onto that instance. So if we go and run deploy AWS shell, we're gonna deploy an app onto that instance, which is going to spin up all of our VFX infrastructure. So you see that's picking up all of the uh, images we've just built. That's based on the current repository. It's searching for the commit hash. 
So based on the commit hash in the, uh, in the Git repository, those are the images that we're getting. Lastly, if we want, we can go and connect to that instance and we can observe this live as it's coming out. Oh yeah, connect. We're using the session manager to connect. Now by default, session manager connects to that, uh, that instance uh, as a, a root user. We don't need to be a root user. So we're going to jump in as the actual user that will be running the deployment. And we can tail the log. So there we go, right now we're starting to deploy our VFX infrastructure. We're creating another VPC um, that's essentially a private network that contains Vault and Console. Vault is what we use to manage all of our dynamic secrets. Uh, it's what we use to automatically sign certificates between all our hosts, so all of that gets handled for us. We also have uh, Console, which is our, our DNS resolver, and as well as that, we set up another VPC, which is where our rendering infrastructure lives. So we'll have deadline, a deadline database that spins up in there. Deadline's gonna go and automatically configure its own certificates, and it's going to make that certificate available to other instances. So the other uh, render nodes that will spin up, they're gonna dynamically utilize the credentials um, by the fact that I have launched these instances, I say that we are declaring that they're safe um, through AWS mechanisms and they have the permission to go and acquire the deadline certificate in order to join our VFX network. So once that's all up and running, then we're able to, we essentially have a, a, um, a full deployment that we can submit um, jobs to. We additionally also have a service that's sitting there waiting for a VPN to uh, connect into the infrastructure as well. So we've got right here, there's a Raspberry Pi and I can just run a set of install steps uh, just to be able to connect that Raspberry Pi to our infrastructure and spin up an open VPN uh, session that will allow us to connect my network here over to the AWS uh, rendering VPC. Okay, so here our vault cluster is starting to spin up and because this is the first time that we're using a fresh instance, it doesn't have the credentials to log into vault. Um, if, there is, if there's never been a vault um, configuration set up before, which it stores that configuration in cloud storage in an S3 bucket, if that's never been set up before, it's going to go and automatically set up all the credentials. But since this is an existing persistent vault installation that I've used before, it's going to expect me to uh, log into the vault uh, using a root key um, in order to be able to, sorry, a root token in order to um, initialize this instance as something that is allowed to configure vault. So we have we have all we have a whole bunch of configuration that our deployer is going to uh, use to alter Vault, and Vault essentially allows us to control permissions on our uh, a lot of what is our sensitive information, like the capacity to uh, provide a certificate, to um, sign SSH certificates, uh, to handle dynamic passwords wherever they might be required. You know, sometimes we're generating um, dynamic passwords and and only allowing certain systems to utilize them. So uh, it's very important that Vault is um, protected as well as possible.